Okie doke. We'll go ahead and get started. Hi, guys. Hi. Yay, I got weights back. This is awesome. Okay, so as per usual, the slides for this week are up on my announcement, CS199 EMP, what do you want to see October 4th? So if you go ahead and follow the link, and uh, ha. you should be taken to some slides that look like this. So that survey I've been talking about, so you can go ahead and take it here. If you go ahead and follow it, you could just see um, it should just take you to a Google form. And you will see that there is only one question that I am requiring on did you answer this question. If you answer this question, you're good to go. I would deeply, deeply appreciate it if you filled out the rest of them, but this is all you're going to have to do in order for me to see, like, oh, I can check this person off for getting credit because that way I'll have your email with your UID. Yeah? Oh, so it's just connected with the slides, so you'll see on the second slide... Um, that it just has like a take it here for the survey I've been talking about. So the survey is going to be open for um, about two weeks. So if you're not going to take it now, it should take you like five minutes unless you have really deep, meaningful feedback, which I appreciate. And I also believe I give you the ability to edit it. So if you think of other things that you want to add later, um, you should be able to go back and add it. But yeah. So, questions on the survey? Oh, I really don't. <laughs> Feel free to give smart aleck answers to that. If you have like a joke or something that you want to put in other, I love jokes and puns. In fact, if you put like the worst pun that you can think of for the first one, there's no extra credit in this class, but if there was, you'd get extra credit. Any other questions? Nope, cool, fairly straightforward. Hopefully it's not too horrible, but yeah. And then I'll obviously feel free, like if you have mean things to say, please feel free to say them too. I appreciate any and all sorts of feedback. So just whatever you have to say, hopefully there's a spot where you can put what you want to say on the survey. But yeah. So in addition, we still have the weekly links for giving feedback. So if you want to give a anonymous feedback just for EMP, you could do so here. If you have topics that you want to suggest, we have a form over here or song suggestions. Whatever you feel like suggesting, you can put it there. Uh, questions on the weekly links. And then you could do this as often and as many times whenever you feel like it. So the, those feedback forms will always be available. But the survey will be only for two weeks. So what did we do last week? So basically, especially given the fact that last week was the first midterm, we're just going to have like a full overview of objects. So there's going to be quite a bit of overlap from last week. But if you weren't here last week, there was a lot of um, interaction where people were asking, oh, what happens if you do this? What happens if you do that? I highly encourage that. That was super fun. So whenever I'm going through some of the examples that um, I have for objects, if you guys have questions or want to see what happens if you do something or use a specific type of syntax, feel free to raise your hand and like, stop me and ask what happens if you do this because that was so much fun. So, so this is all the stuff that we've seen so far with objects, <laughs> quite a bit going on. Um, any high-level qu questions on objects before we begin? All right. So you're here last week and you don't like triangles. I'm terribly sorry because I'm continuing on with triangles. So 
<laughs> so apologies to the trigonometry haters. But yeah, so we have objects. So Java, as you've heard, is an object-oriented language. So we finally got to the object part of the language because life isn't just about ints and booleans. So we combine state and behavior. So state, you could think variables, and behavior, think functions. And again, I like Wikipedia's answer on what objects are. Wikipedia um, tends to have pretty good computer science um, explanations to a lot of the terminologies that's, at least for me, fairly easy to understand. So I have that linked over here. So class, we have <laughs> class uh, is basically your blueprint or layout or what each of the objects are going to, like the properties and what you expect each object to do whenever you declare a new object. So it's your blueprint or layout. And then, yeah. Um, I was going to ask about that. So, oh, wait, sorry. You linked it to the variable. Like the oh, okay. Go for it. Oh, wait. Oh, so is every variable an instance variable then? So yeah, so the instance variables are the variables that belong to um, the class. So whenever you declare an object, each one of those is going to have certain variables. These are different than what we've mostly seen are the local variables. So as soon as the function or the method is done, those variables disappear, those don't exist. The instances stay with the object throughout the object's lifespan. And then um, we also have parameters, which like similar story as local variables, but the member variables or instance variables stay with the object. So that's why we also declare them like outside of any of the constructors or methods because as soon as each one of those are done, so here, I'll go to my little example. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, we're gonna have stuff on animals and cats. So um, this is what we saw last week. Um, so that's why we declare them up here, because if we do stuff like double b1 is equal to zero up here, then as soon as even the constructor is done, we lose um, the ability to use that object ever again. But whenever we declare it up here, it becomes part of the class and then therefore part of the objects we declare later. Does that clarify a bit? Cool. So as you saw with the triangle, we have a base and a height. So these are going to be consistent with all triangles. And then we have instance methods. So these are methods defined in the class. So this would be what our objects can do. So for instance, triangles, something consistent that we'll probably want to do is compute the area and then do triangle things. I was going to put like sine, cosine, but even I don't like that kind of stuff. So we can also do triangle things. Um, but again, these are all part of the class. Questions there? All right, then they're not. So constructors, we can define our own, and most of the time you're going to see yourself defining your own because the way that Java does it with default constructors is if you don't write the constructor, it's going to default everything to zero or it's zero representation. So whenever we had these member variables, so if we had the double base and double height, then those would default to 0.0, .0 and then Booleans default to false because that's represented by zero. Char's default to the null character because that's also represented by zero. So if we don't define our own constructor, job is just like, okay, I'll do it myself. It makes everything zero. Yeah? Um, why are there sometimes constructors that, like, for example, they're not the getters and setters one, but there's a structure where you set the count and then there's also a setter. Mm -hmm. Why do I, it, like, works for me, but is that, what's the point of that? Oh, so um, you mean why we would want like a constructor that takes in a parameter of um, whatever that we're trying to set? Yeah, so this will 
become more apparent um, when we start doing other things with objects because sometimes we know things immediately, so we want to set them immediately. So it essentially saves us a line of code. Um, and also, it, it could just be a little bit clearer information to read because um, maybe you've noticed with IntelliJ, it fills in like the little parameter that you have. So it would have, let me see if I can, if I have a example in the, oh, that was not practice, triangle test. There we go. Uh, it's not popping up, but, you know, um, when we take in some of the parameters over here, maybe it will show up. Well, it's not popping up for that one, but like with IntelliJ, sometimes it'll show you which parameters that you're setting with the little colon over there. That can be a little bit easier to read sometimes. And then other times, um, it's just... If you have all the information already ready to go, you may as well declare a new instance of it. And it's a little bit of a sandy check for you because especially if there are a lot of properties, if we're declaring an object that's more complex, like if we were trying to create a car, a car would have a lot more properties where if we just had a default car constructor with everything set to zero, and then we were trying to set the make, model, color, everything else, and we had like setter, 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 it would be easy to forget something or get lost trying to find the setters like, oh, did I set this to the right thing? So you can get around it both ways. So it would be more of like a stylistic um, choice as far as I can think of. But that's why um, some of the time we would want constructors with parameters. That was kind of a lengthy explanation for a relatively simple thing, but... So in this little example, um, in this particular case, it doesn't take any parameters. We could just declare a new triangle called triple pointy, because three points. So any other questions about constructors? All right. So variables. So we'll go over protected a little bit later in the slides, but for the most part, what you're going to see is public and private. So public, the variable can be read or written by anyone. So if it has access to the object, it has access to its variables. And then private, it's only within the class. So as soon as you're done editing whatever .java file that you're working on, as soon as you switch to a different file that uses it, you no longer have direct access to those member variables. And sim similarly with methods, so public methods, anybody can call it private. It can only be called by other methods within the class. So this probably doesn't come up the most, but if you've looked through some of the testing scripts that we had, I believe that there are some private methods that we use, but it's a good sanity check if you give a user your code to use it and they want to expand upon it, but you don't want them to be able to use something, you can make the method private so they don't have direct access to it. Questions there? Cool. So even more stuff. So we have this, which is a keyword that we can refer to the instance variables within an instance method. So that's a little bit wordy, but basically it can help as a sandy check. Instead of referring to the variable by name, we can say, for instance, with the triangles, this triangle's height or this triangle's base instead of just height and base. So... There are occasions where it will come up where you will be kind of forced into using this, but for the most part, you can, it'll mostly come up to like a readability type thing. And then static. So static is a little bit weird, and I, I don't know if it's the best name, but I guess they couldn't think of a better name. But static methods and variables, they belong to the class so not to a specific instance. So 
we have this class floating in the Java space and we're declaring different objects each and every time we say new. But the static methods and variables, they always hang out in the class in Java space. So they stay there statically and don't move with the objects. That's the best way that I can explain what's going on. And then, so they can, they can be called without an instance. Um, so that means that you can't actually use this. And again, I should have bolded that or put it in quotes. So this referring to the this keyword because it's not referring to this instance or another instance. It's referring to the class. So I'll pause right there. Questions? So. Yeah, good question. So um, for instance, like the most common case that it comes up, at least for me, is if you're trying to keep track of a count on how many objects you've created. So like right here, we could have um, private static int count on how many times a triangle was created using the class, and then just increment it each time. Oh, no, so um, the way that you would access it is you, could, you can actually use one of the objects you've declared, but you can actually just, here, let me set it to public real quick. And then clear this stuff. You can use the capital letter name, so whatever the class name is, and then access that variable there. So let me show you what happens there. I should just print zero since, oh, that's set to the wrong thing. Triangle test. That sounds like the Beetlejuice type thing, except for TA name, but there we go. So you could just access it using the class, or if we create, a triangle over here. We could print it out using one of the objects of the specific class's name. Did I answer your question? Awesome. Yeah. And then, what was your question? A uh, static method is what? <laughs> right. Um, I believe that the precedence, um, since the um, local variable is like the most specific use of that name, but let's actually find out because I feel like a live demonstration would be better anyway. So we have count over here and we can create, did you want a, you want a static method that would make the most sense. So public static int and um, count and then can take a parameter int count. So So it would be uh whatever so it could be um the parameter since that's the most specific use of the word count at that time and then we could also do something like make it without parameters and count is equal to 23. And then go ahead, oh, forgot to take that out. There we go. And then we would have 23 here since um, 
the local variable would be the most specific instance of the name. So does that make sense? Good question. Any other questions? Oh, okay. Oh, if it was private and you had... I think you can do this. I forget if this is... Okay, so you would have to specify it by the class name, I believe. But let me make sure that works. Yeah, so you would specify it by the class name. That was a really good question. I got nervous for a second. I wasn't sure if you could do that. <laughs> Any other questions? This is fun. <laughs> All right. Cool and static? All right. So again, this would come up like if you're using the math class, for instance, you wouldn't do something like math, my math is equal to new math. Uh, double the pi is equal to my math dot pi. You would just say math dot pi because that's always going to remain true and you don't need to create an entire math object in order to just get the value of pi. You could just use the class or the class static variable of it. Any questions on this slide? So one final thing. So final, it's come up a little bit more. We've seen it in uh, the, some of the parameters. So this keyword disallows a variable from being modified. So again, this is good for values we never want to change. And it's a good sanity check for us because if we're using stuff, like for instance, all triangles have 180 degrees. So, uh, if we were to try to just make our code work for specific test cases and just like, uh, I'm just going to make a triangle equal 171 degrees, we wouldn't be able to do that even in our sleep deprived minds of just wanting the test cases to pass. So it's a good sanity check for us to make sure that we're not modifying stuff that we don't actually want to modify. We just want to be able to use attributes off of. Cool and final? All right, so inheritance. So we've seen this a little bit on Wednesday, I think. So be lazy, engineers. Don't do something someone has already done. So inherit, it's, so if we see opportunity for something to inherit features, we should do that. So for instance, if more triangles, we want to create a right triangle. A right triangle is still a triangle. So still has three sides, so that would be an excellent time for us to inherit it, all the triangle methods instead of having to redefine the area of a right triangle and saying that it has the base and the height and everything else. We can just go ahead and extend the class just as the subclass extends the base class and get all of the triangle-y goodness that we would expect. Plus, we could add some right triangle features. Questions on inheritance? dive into a bit more of what's going to happen. So the main part that I would want you guys to look at is towards the bottom on what's actually going to happen if we try to create a new cat, which extends animal. So these constructors are quite boring. They're going to print out stuff. So. so if we try to create a new cat, then we're actually going to see new animal created and then new cat created. So you don't believe me. We see new animal created, new cat created. So this is because it has to create an animal before it creates a cat. So 
Um, I believe you guys have seen the super keyword. That'll come up a little bit later. But uh, so since a cat is a type of animal, it has to know what an animal is before a cat is. So that's why you see new animal created and then new cat created. So then if I change it to animal C1 is equal to new cat. Let you guys think about what you'll see there. So we're actually still going to see new animal created and new cat created. So the reason why we can make an animal into a cat is because cats have all the specifications of an animal. So whenever we say that an animal is equal to new cat, it knows exactly how to define an animal so we can use um, a child class that inherited off of the base class. Yeah, so you're actually allowed to do this. So, show you here. So, that's actually what happens. Because the way that I think of it, and I'm going to try this demo for the first time, so we'll see how it happens. But basically, I kind of think of it as like a cyclone of a roll of paper. So, Down at the bottom here, everything's an object. And then we can extend animal off of object. So animal would be up here. And then cat would be up here. So if we say animal is equal to new cat, so this would be animal is equal to new cat. We could actually fit this down to where the animal is defined, and it goes up to where a cat is. But it has, let's say, if we had more interesting properties about the cat, since this is a cylinder on just, like, we're saying that this is an animal's, like, circumference, we can say, we would have to define the other things about a cat in order to expand it out. But since it can reach a cat while maintaining whatever the properties of an animal are, we're allowed to do that. Yeah? So if I were to try to call would that work? Yeah, so let's actually see what happens. So public void meow is that meow. So see well one dot So it wouldn't be able to resolve this because this, going back to this little analogy, this was defined in this outer circumference of what a cat would do. So since we only have whatever is defined for the inner one for animal, it wouldn't know what to do. But if we had, let's say, make noise and then public would make noise, meow, and then public would make noise, and then s out, I'm an animal. So this would actually say meow because we had defined, yeah, exactly. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, so yeah. 
Um, I think so. You would. I actually have to think about that. So it would be like if you said like cat c1 and then c1 dot super dot make noise. Yeah. So let's see. C1 dot. Because I believe that super is only for calling the constructor. <laughs> so if the um, constructor call parameters. I'm not entirely familiar with that, but. Yeah. Um, like, you oh, you're referring to in the cat class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying now. So, I'm an animal. Oh, wait, that's not interesting because that was in C1. Name your variables, proper things. Do as I say, not as I do. Then, comment out those. So, we would see I'm an animal. I'm an animal. So, since we're calling the super over there within the cat class, um, we could go ahead and just get access to whatever animal is doing to make noise. Cool. Good stuff. Any other questions or things you want to see? All right. So the next one, cat C1 is equal to new animal. So what do you guys think is going to happen over there? A few seconds to think about. So you would actually get a red squiggly line message for incompatible types. So required cat found animal. So show you what I mean. So, incompatible types require cat found animal, and this is because we wouldn't be able to fulfill all of the cat properties if we said that the cat is a new animal. So, it wouldn't be able to fit inside the little cone of how we're defining things. Questions there? Nope. Cool. On to the next step. <laughs> so the super constructor. So this is how we can access the parent's constructor and the child's constructor. So this is definitely going to come in handy whenever we inherit something and the parent class only has constructors with parameters. We're going to have to be able to feed those parameters in somehow. So if we wanted to change animal over here to, we can make a parameter public string sound. So, so this would no longer be okay because there's no default constructor available in Animal for the cat to use. So this means that it doesn't see um, a constructor in Animal that takes zero parameters or the default. So before, so if we go ahead and add in sound equals I am an 
Panama. So this would be okay because it has something where it's just like, I don't need to know any extra information. I know how to create an animal even if I don't give any parameters about it. But as soon as we take this out, step this backwards. then we have an issue because it doesn't know how to create it. So we can either like make the user provide a parameter or most cats meow, so. So. There's the thing I was talking about. So the sounds, the little um, parameter that we could give with the semicolon. So this actually has to come at the beginning because like we saw before, it has to know how to create an animal before it can create a cat. So this would be okay. And again, we can't do this. So we're going to get red squiggly line of death. So good question there. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, that goes back to the default constructor where it would be the constructor with zero parameters and everything zeroes out. So the string would be the empty string in this case if we didn't give an animal uh, constructor. So this will make the other part invalid, but um, so this makes no sense. It doesn't take a parameter. So this all is okay. We're just getting a grace line because we haven't used it, but we go to examples, see when cat is equal to new cat. Yes, exactly. So that's why it goes back to just Java's like, okay, I'm going to do it on my own, make everything zero, and move on with, with this life. So if we have just the print line here, but we have no constructor over there, then if we go ahead and run the example, so the example is just going to be the C1 cat, it's okay. Java's going to know what to do. Just everything is going to be zero in this case. Yeah. Good stuff. So any other questions? Cool on that? Spoilers. So um, this was similar to the sound stuff that we had before, but we could also give the animal a name. And then the way that we could also extend the cat class is uh, public double hate, and then Boolean likes catnip. But my cat is the most loving cat ever, so the hate would be negative, just saying. Yes. Thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> All right, so questions there? All right, so a quick word of warning. So oftentimes, especially once you uh, come to understand inheritance a bit more, it can be super easy for you to get carried away. So the bit of advice that I have is get projectors that don't turn off every like five minutes. But also think about in English is a versus has a. So a mouse is a pet. So a mouse does not have a pet. But car, a car has a wheel. A car is not a type of wheel. So whenever you're creating new objects, composition will be what your instance uh, uh, variables are. And then Inheritance would be if you're extending something. And then in some cases, a mouse does have a pet. 
questions there? If that was confusing, then you can disregard it. That's just my words of warning and wisdom. All right. So public versus private versus protected. So public, as we saw before, anyone can access. Private, access only within the class. So as soon as we click to a new file, we have to have some other means of getting to whatever variable or method. And then protected, so access within the class or any of its descendants. And this could be same package or could be any package. So if it inherits from a parent class, it has access to it. But if you were just using a class, then you wouldn't be able to have access. So, so packages will probably go over a bit later because like it gets a bit um, dicey. But basically, like packages would be like the extender pack. So for instance, we could have like um, a graphics package. So if we wanted to create cool like video graphics or just like an interactive game or something, so we would probably extend that package. So the the one that always comes to mind is like if you're trying to create a Pong game, you would probably import uh, the Java graphics package, and then you would extend it to, to make a Pong game so you could get access to the whatever maybe protected methods that are in there. So if you wanted to like recolor the screen or something, you would have access to that. But if somebody were to take your Pong game and use it in like a grander scheme, like if they were trying to create like Sims that could play a Pong game or something and was just using it, then they wouldn't have access to it. So package is just like little like extender packs that people have made. I think we're going to go more into details over those as soon as we get done with like the Java fundamentals. So if that's an acceptable answer for now, that's probably good. So any other questions? So other tidbits. So we kind of saw this before with the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing, but hierarchical resolution. So it starts at the class using the name or method and then works its way up until the name is found or we have a failure. So this would have been like the make sound. If we were using the cat make sound, it would see that the cat's one was the first one that it found. So it would use that one. But since cat inherited from animal, if we didn't define it, then it would just move one further up until it got to the animals make sound and then just use that one. So that's how Java automatically resolves which method that you're talking about. So again, this is limited to public and protected. So if we defined a private make sound for the animal to use, cat wouldn't actually see that. So that's kind of what's going on there and how Java is going to determine which method to use, if any. So again, if we made it private in animal, it would result in a failure if we didn't define it in cat. Questions there? Okie doke. So quick word on object design because you're kind of doing it for your MP. So modeling real life and think like a designer or a wannabe filmmaker because I started out in film. So plan first. What do I need? What does everything do? So if you're making a movie, you wouldn't just jump out on something that you thought was a set and yell action. You actually like plan out everything like who are the characters and where am I going to shoot and everything else. There's planning involved. And then so you then organize. So where does everything go? So what methods need what things? What needs to be local? What do I need to have an instance variable of? And then implement. So how do I put everything in code? So you draw everything out and you plan it and it's all nice and pretty on a sheet of paper. Then you can go right in in IntelliJ and then make a super awesome connect end game or movie. So that's just my quick advice on whenever you're thinking about designing objects. Just do as much as you can um, before you actually open up IntelliJ and then go for it. You'll 
more often than not be better off rather than just diving straight in and trying to code up everything all at once. Questions there? Okie doke. So practice part. So if you guys had any questions about anything in general or MP3 with the Connect Endgame, if not, if you haven't gotten started, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to go ahead and get started now. I try to reserve an hour for you guys to work on it where you can get some extra individualized help. But any questions on objects or 125 in general or fun facts, puns, any other memes about 125? I've enjoyed Reddit very much the past week. <laughs> Everybody good? Good, 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 good? All right. Well, the time is yours to do whatever with. Um, please remember to fill out my survey. I super duper appreciate it. And go forth and connect in.